I would like to shout out Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Hello and welcome to the Broken Sword. Today we are looking at the great spider creature, Ungoliant. Ungolian was an almighty spirit, but an evil spirit. She best resembles a great spider, but no one is clear where she came from. There are theories though. For example, debatably the most popular is that she simply came and was born from the darkness, which means she represented and was an incarnation of the pure emptiness and darkness itself. If it helps you perhaps, and this is from my own personal opinion, you could almost think of her as though she is the opposite of what Tom Bombadil is. After all, no one knows his beginnings either, except that he existed before even Malkor came to Arda, and he is considered a jolly and whimsical being. Certainly sounds like the exact opposite of a being who would take the form of a giant and godly spider like Ungoliant did to me. She could potentially also be a being that something like the One Ring would have no effect on, like Tom Bombadil too. You don't really know, but when we get into a story now you might understand why her power shows that this could be the case. But anyway, another version of her beginnings that some think is true is that she could be a Maya, or lesser spirit that had fallen and that was corrupted by Malkor. However, she is not actually listed amongst any of the known Ainur, so this version is far less likely, but in some ways not impossible. This completely unknown origin does help add to the mystery of this being though, as in earlier versions of the Legendarium at least, the Valar had no knowledge themselves of where she came from. The only thing that appears certain and known about her earlier life is that during the Age of the Trees, before the First Age of Middle Earth, is that she had left Malkor's side and had gone to the land in the southeast of a man called Avathar. This land was laid south of Valinor at the feet of the Pelori Mountains and this land had really been forgotten apart from beings like Ungoliant. Very much land that became ignored. And when I say that she left Malkor's side, it is thought that she was generally like a servant to him, a bit like the Balrogs were. But once he had lost, she was more than happy to run away, hide and forget about him. Basically just survive. But now time would pass and Malkor would come back to Ungoliant for Malkor had fled from Valinor and wished for the aid of the great spider creature to return and attack the two trees of Valinor with him. And for those of you who are not sure here, the two trees of Valinor are named Talaperion and Laurelin, the silver and gold trees, and it was these that brought light to the land of the Valar before the times of the sun and the moon, and these were what had replaced the two lamps which had existed in the north and south in even earlier days. Ungoliant agreed to join Malkor on his mission and she used her power to shroud both of them in her webs of pure darkness. This gained them entry into Valinor and got them right up to the trees. This event would become known as the Darkening of Valinor, for when Malkor got to the trees he would then strike them with his spear, and the sap would pour out, as though the trees bled in pain. Ungoliant stepped up here, and as it says in the Silmarillion, But Ungoliant sucked it up. And going then from tree to tree, she set her black beak to their wounds till they were drained, and the poison of death that was in her went into their tissues and withered them, root, branch, and leaf, and they died. And still she thirsted, and going to the wells of Varda, she drank them dry. But Ungoliant belched forth black vapours as she drank, and swelled to a shape so vast and hideous that Malkor was afraid. Once Ungoliant was done, there was barely but a drop that remained from the trees. To the point that when Yavanna tried to sing the trees back into existence as she had done before, and Iena wept for its loss, all they could do was revive the one last flower, which would become the moon, and the last fruit, which would become the sun. After their act of evil was over, they fled back to Middle Earth, which also meant fleeing from the Valar and their wrath. This is where we witness some of the great power that Ungoliant possessed, for when they reached Middle Earth, Ungoliant wished for what she had been promised, and that was to be rewarded with both hands. Although Malkor gave her the gems of the Noldor, he would not give her the Silmarils and he kept hold of them in his right hand. For Malkor had realised his desire for these Silmarils was far too great to let a creature like Ungoliant devour them. But one thing Malkor took for granted was just 
how powerful Ungoliant had become from drinking the sap of the two trees. And when you couple that with the fatigue that Malka also felt at this point for his part in their evil deeds, then Ungoliant was, at least for this very moment in time, far stronger than the Dark Lord. She wrapped a Malkor within her webs and planned not to just devour him, but the Silmarils as well, all because of his betrayal. Luckily for Malkor though, his cries of desperation were heard by his Balrogs that had dug themselves deep underground, and they came to rescue their lord. The fire of Malkor's servants proved far too much for Ungoliant, and she had no choice now but to flee without her meal. Ungoliant would come to rest in the mountain range of Ered Gorgoroth within Beleriand. Here she would give birth to the spiders of Middle-earth. There would be many of these descended from her. The most famous of these from the stories would be those spiders that lived in Mirkwood, who the company of Thorin encounter in The Hobbit, as well as the larger spider of Shelob, being the one that stabs Frodo in the Two Towers book near Kirithungal. The number of terrifying spiders that dwelt here would lead this land to gain a reputation as a place of horror, meaning few would ever dare to even come close to approaching this land. From here, Ungoliant would rarely ever attempt to leave this land again. One time she attempted to enter the land of Doriath, but she retreated pretty quickly after witnessing the power of the Maya Melian who dwelt there with her husband Thingol. And that is really the last thing we hear, this is where basically we reach the end of everything that we know about Ungoliant. It is said that she retreated to the Forgotten Lands at the very south of the world, and here she would just starve, and starve to the point that her ever increasing hunger would consume her, and when she could bear this no more, she would devour herself. So, after hearing pretty much all of her little story that we know, what does this really tell us about this creature? Well, first of all, is that she almost certainly began life as a simple spirit. After all, Tolkien uses the word of her taking shape as a spider, so she was not created or bred into existence. She chose her form just like the Valar did. We can also tell that she was an incredibly strong being. She absorbed the power of the two trees of Valinor, and then even overpowered Morgoth. And even though Morgoth was weakened at this point, he was still the mightiest Valar to walk upon the earth. So that's nothing just to turn your nose about. Does this mean that she was actually stronger than the Valar? Maybe, perhaps more powerful than some, but at full strength, probably not at all. She just happened to be when the stars aligned at this exact moment. Either way though, she was still one of the deadliest beings Tolkien ever brought into creation. And that is really where I will end this video for today, because sadly as terrifying and powerful as she may be, and she was a part of one of the most evil deeds ever in the histories of Tolkien, that's kind of all we ever get to know. So that is kind of where I have to draw a line under the spirit of Ungoliant. Now before my question of the day, I would like to talk about our amazing sponsor, Squarespace. If you are looking to create a website, whatever your skill level, Squarespace makes everything not just simple, but very professional looking too. It is easy to include a fully integrated commenting system, along with the use of their powerful blogging tools to categorise, share and schedule your posts. Do you wish to buy or sell something? Well, Squarespace's powerful e-commerce is easy to set up with you also being able to add simple to use extensions. These tools can help you manage inventory, promote products, ship items all over the world and much more. You need something? They have a way to do it. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash broken sword to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So I hope you all enjoyed this video for today, but now it is time for my question for you all, which is, where do you think Ungoliant would rank amongst the power of all the Valar? Could she have overpowered a full strength Morgoth? Could she possibly take on Tolkas? Or was she just that lucky that Morgoth was so tired and she just managed to give herself such a power boost from the sap of the two trees? Let me know all of your thoughts and opinions on this subject in the comment section below. And now firstly to quickly mention our other channels, which will all be linked in the description below if you'd like to check them out. And then to shout out our patrons. Firstly, we have our Divine Power tier members of Kevin, Abram and Matt. You are all awesome. And a big thanks to our Fire Demon tier members of Nasheeth, Denver Steel and Gregory. You are amazing. And as well, I cannot forget the Wizard Staff tier members of John, Andrew, Bill, Evil Chameleon, Jennifer and Finrod Felagund to go with them. Every single one of you is a true legend of the Brohirrim. 
Finally, if you have managed to reach the very end of this video with me today and you have enjoyed what you've seen, then please hit that subscribe button on the channel and the bell icon too so that you could be notified of future uploads. So thank you if you have managed to reach the very end of this video with me today. Please remember to drop that like on the video as well as it really helps us with that YouTube algorithm and I will see you next time on The Broken Sword.